So the last objective is to plan for the implementation of present movement exercises when they are needed. So the development of mindfulness and present moment skills will not happen without practice. So you need to have a plan for when you're going to do the practice component, when you're and how you're going to develop these skills, these skill sets over time. And then, um, and then there, you, need to, you need to start to plan for and think about those moments in your life when you know that you tend to have issues with mindfulness and with being present. So you can predict when that's going to be a problem for you and put in place some antecedent strategies to help prevent those problems. But then also think about when you notice, when you become more aware of those behavioral patterns, when you notice them, the, the things that you can do, the steps that you can take, the actions that you can make in the moment to interrupt and redirect those kind of mindless behaviors. So in the Flip the Script book, one of the habits um, is called, what if you had one week? And so the exercise and activity that Coit developed in regard to this is to really think about and plan for and consider if you had one week left of your life, what is one thing that you could do every day to become more present and make the most out of every moment in your life? So rather than being consumed by what's not in our current environment, um, Getting, getting really present and thinking about what are the things that you can do to make the most out of each moment, connect the most with the people in your, in your life that you love and care about the most, and really show that you care. So for my own self, one of my biggest struggles has been um, actively listening and really truly engaging with the people who are in my life or in my presence that I have that I am spending time with. Um, and so the, you know, this has caused problems in my um, marriage. It has caused problems in my friendships. It's caused problems in my family. Um, it's caused problems in my work life and my supervisory roles. Um, because what, you know, I would, my pattern of behavior I would tend to engage in was uh, partial kind of that partial participation where you know my brain was here but I was supposed to but my body was here and I'm trying to do the things that I'm you know that I'm scheduled to do that I'm supposed to do that I have to do um, but and being you know my, my attention is constantly being pulled off to one side. Um, rather than being focused on, on, the, on the moment. And so for me, the struggle of active listening is the one that I um, want to talk about in regard to my personal plan for implementing present moment, you know, those present moment exercises, applying them to my life. And so the first thing I thought about in regard to this is the importance of communicating our intent and communi communicating our plan to those that we care most about and with those people with whom we have had issues in the past. And so, you know, with, within my um, relationship with my husband and supervisory capacity, I want to commit and I'm going and I am committing to openly communicating both um, humbly admitting and taking ownership for my past behavior and the um, the impact it might have had on our relationship so being able to say to my husband you know sometimes when you start to talk to me and I'm right in the middle of something I um, you know, I don't have, I don't have the time or I haven't had the opportunity to fully shift my attention to what it is that you're saying. And therefore I am, you know, I'm splitting my attention and not really paying attention to what's going on. 
this has caused, you know, this has caused problems in my life because I've, you know, I've missed information. You know, my husband has told me things that later on I had no recollection that even, you know, that had even crossed his lips. Um, and, and that has, you know, caused some turmoil in, you know, in our relationship because he doesn't feel heard and he doesn't feel like, um, appreciated or valued or worth my time because my attention was on something else that in that moment felt or was you know, more important to me. And so being able to openly and honestly communicate with him what I, you know, I am going to make an effort to when, when you want my attention, when you want to talk, I'm going to make every effort to be completely present. Take away those things which are distracting and pulling my attention away and give you my full attention and actively listen, which to me and in my life requires turning off technology, putting down, putting down my phone, closing the book, closing the computer, turning towards the person. So engaging in those active listening behaviors, my shoulders are oriented to him, my face is oriented to him. I don't have to be making perfect eye contact, but and using you know full body listening um, and you know verbally responding um, while he's speaking, recasting, re you know paraphrasing and and uh, responding to the questions or statements that he's making. And the goal of this and is for me to establish deeper relationships with the people I love and care about most and truly show them how much I do care about what they're saying and what they, you know, and, and our relationship. And so this is something, you know, this is really important for me. And this is a plan that means a lot to me because if I only had one week, what I would want to communicate to my husband in particular is how much I care about him and how much I value our relationship and how much, how, more important he is to me in my life than the computer and Facebook and the work that I have to do and the book that I or the book that I'm reading or the other thing that you know that I'm busying myself with. And so this commitment is one that I have made to myself and a commitment that I made to him. And the more that I practice with him, because I'm you know he's the person in my life that I see the most frequently and, and have the most um, constant exposure to, uh, the more readily I'm able to do this with him, um, I know that I am, I will be more able to do this with others in my life that I have less frequent contact with. And so I'll be able to generalize those skills to other people, to other contexts, other situations, and thereby maintain those skills over time. All right, so the, um, here is the homework for this coming week. Um, so for in preparation for lesson six, the optional homework is to read the chapter 13 from A Liberated Mind, to read chapters nine and 10 from Hook the Script, and chapters 10 through 12 from Get Out of Your Mind and Into Your Life. The second piece of homework is an expanded daily um, not, no technology time routine. Um, so rather than waking up 15 to 30 minutes earlier, this adds in time for mindfulness meditation. This is the strategy that works best for me, um, but you're welcome to choose any other time during your day. Um, but so this would be shifting from 15 to 30 minutes to up to 30 to 45 minutes when you would still then read from a book or article that are chosen to empower you, write your baseline blessing, blessings, and then engage in mindfulness meditation. And the last one, which is my absolute favorite because I'm a huge fan of music, and I truly do feel that music brings us together as humans. There's something um, uh, deeply held within us as human beings uh, that, you know, there's some deeper connection, I feel, to music where you know, it's when you listen to music, there's that 
kind of a, you know, um, a deep sense of connection and joy, and it can evoke all sorts of different emotions, those sounds. And so whether that's developed over time or whether that is within our um, genetic patterning, I don't know. Whether it truly has healing properties, I don't know. I feel as though there's some, you know, there's something um, healing in music. For me personally, at you know, different points in my life, I have developed um, playlists that I really connected with at that point in my life, the, the songs, the artists, the artist stories, the lyrics, the um, instrumentals, and, um, you know, being able to listen to those, you know, listen to those playlists on repeat, um, you know, helped me process through what it is that I was going through. This activity, which is based on the Bring, bring the Bliss um, at, from the, the script book, is ask you to pick a song every day that makes you want to move and jump and play and play it as loudly as you can and just dance. Jump around, swing your arms, swing your hips, pump your arms, get jiggy with it. And the goal really is to practice bringing the bliss, right? So I talked earlier about um, this tendency that I have to, you know, like, I don't, you know, oh, no joy, no happiness, no contentment. Those aren't things that I, you know, I'm, I'm going to avoid all those feelings and emotions because I've got a ton of things to do. I've got, I've got to stay busy. Um, and so this one for me is really fun and liberating and brings a lot of joy to my life because just like, you know, let your, let your weirdness out and just be yourself and move and feel the music and really feel what it feels like. Um, and really bring the bliss into every day, every moment of, of the day. Um, and by you know practicing this deliberately on a regular basis, I have actually you know I've it's come to be something that I want in my life, and I find myself doing more regularly um, than I used to. And you know finding those just even if it's a moment momentary sense of joy. Um, being able to you know, find that happiness and find that contentment and you know, really gain some sense of reinforcement that, that helps me continue to be motivated to, um, to keep doing the hard work because it really matters. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have a great remaining of your day or great evening, whatever time zone that you're in. And I will see you all next week.